So I believe that a good story always bears repeating, if it happens to be the right story for this day. Do you remember when I was telling you about that young man, his name is Nate Sears, and Nate uh, lived in Cape Cod, and one early morning he happened to be walking on the beach. He was all by himself. It was a cold, brisk morning. And all of a sudden, to his horror, he noticed that there was a whale that was flailing, distraught, on the beach. Immediately, Nate knew that he had to do something, but he had no idea what. After a few stunned moments, he rolled up his pants, he waded into the icy waters, and he made his way to the whale. Now, when he reached the floundering animal, all he knew to do was this. He, he simply reached out to touch the animal. I ask you this, how many people have ever looked into that small whale eye as you're touching a whale? For that matter, how many whales have been touched by a person, right? Both the whale and Nate uh, shared a huge risk. Nate weighed, whoa, maybe 150 pounds, the whale several tons. One swat with its huge tail would have killed Nate. The whale, on the other hand, was gasping for life. Both man and beast had to lean into something beyond them to figure out what to do next. As afraid as Nate was, the plight of this floundering, suffering animal gave him the courage to act into now what can only be called a primitive trust. And the same was true for that white frightened whale. So here's what happened. As Nate stood on the side of the whale, he reached over and he placed his hands even more firmly on the side. Miraculously, the whale responded. The whale calmed down and stopped its thrashing. And then with every wave that came in from the ocean, Nate began pushing, pushing, pushing this mammoth beast back into the direction of the deep waters. Finally, the whale was turned around just enough to finally swim back into the sea. Besides being Welcome Back Sunday, today we celebrate Grandparents' Day. Here are a few of the whale size issues that are in front of us today. As I mentioned, today we hear what in my mind is the worst gospel ever. I don't understand Jesus, I know her hyperbole, I get that. I know we don't take it literally, but still, really hate your mother, your brother, your sister. Really, Jesus, Jesus and I are going to have a talk about that someday. But <coughs> that is the first whale size issue. What do we make of this gospel? Another whale size issue is this. The world as we know it is in deep trouble. Life as we know it is being dramatically affected by climate change. There isn't a single issue that Christians care about that isn't being affected by our warming earth. Immigration, migration patterns, 
war, peace, poverty, race, public health, disaster recovery, food shortages. On top of this, scientists now say that humanity has only 12 years left to act to avoid the worst of climate change. But where will we, God's creatures, find the strength and the courage to act? How will we have faith enough to reach beyond ourselves and accomplish what already feels impossible. So I ask us today to wade into these waters together. To the issue of being Grandparents Day, if those of you who are young would bear with us, we are essentially here for you. You are invited to listen in to while we are your elders hope to put our shoulders together with you towards your future in these hurting days. And for those of us today who perhaps are not parents or grandparents, no matter, Adam and I are volunteering officially to share our three granddaughters with you, Emma, Jane, and Charlotte, after all, we know that it takes a village to pull off whale size issues that affect us all. So we come to church today, as I mentioned, to hear these winsome words. Unless you hate your mother and your father, your brother, your sisters, cannot be much. I'm thinking that includes grandparents. Surely the whole family is included. Is Jesus or your family. No in between. No both and solutions. This past week, I, I couldn't help but remember once when I was perhaps a preteen, and my mom, who happened to be a devoted convert to Catholicism, she was sitting at her sewing table where she often was making a really, really crazy Sunday dress for us. For some reason, I don't know why, I went up to her side and I said, Mom, who do you love more, me or the Blessed Virgin? <laughs> now just to say, I think I was hoping to hear something back like, these words that Joan Baez once put together, you are an amazing grace. You are a precious jewel. You special, miraculous, unrepeatable, fragile, fearful, tender, lost, sparkling ruby, emerald, jeweled, rainbow, splendid person. After a thoughtful moment, she said, Our Blessed Mother, <coughs> somehow putting Mom on the spot like that, I think got to maybe what Jesus was after. Loving God is the most important thing of our lives. Holy Mary, Mother of God. I remember I was a little disappointed, but in fact, wasn't her message that, Linda, you are not the center of the universe. God is. Familial love is a wondrous thing. It is a bond that we all crave. And we exalt when we are blessed enough to have it. But hear this. According to Jesus, even familial love 
is not going to save this floundering world. It has to be nothing less than God. My mother's faith was formed in the Baltimore Catechism, and that's where I picked up this as well. Question, why are you here on earth? Answer, for one reason alone, to know, love, and serve God with your whole heart and mind and soul. And by the way, to love your neighbor as yourself. If we don't love God above and beyond everything else, what anchoring source do we have to pass on to our children and our grandchildren in times of crisis? What hope for the world can we model leaning into when our children ask us, what do we do? Now today, Grandparents Sunday, we face these whale-sized issues of climate change. This past week, Hurricane Dorian pounded the southeastern coast. So today, we are here gathered to pray for everyone who was in its path, and especially for the first responders. And why do we pray, thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven? Why do we offer our monetary help as best we can? Because we trust together that God is bigger and more loving than we are. Because we trust that God is even more vested in loving this world and into its well-being than we are. And because even today, God is showing us, each and every one of us here today, how to step into those waters with courage. Like you, I listened to dire predictions, and to tell you the truth, it would be tempting to stand on the shore immobilized. But we grandparents here have a responsibility to you. We may not know yet what to do, but like Nate, we know we have to do something. This coming year, here at Resurrection, we have the luxury of having a spiffy, new, painted church. We have fruit galore from a gorgeous garden and orchard. This year, perhaps it is time for now for us to cultivate and pay attention to our inner faith life. Perhaps it is time where God is looking to anoint us, even us grandparents, as special, miraculous, unrepeatable, fragile, fearful, tender, lost, sparkling rubies. We come together to worship today knowing we cannot stand by and do nothing, while the way that we were brought up to live, the way that we inherited from our parents, might bring more and more deterioration of Earth's life-giving climate, God invites us at this time to push and push and push beyond ourselves for wisdom, for insight, for courage, and for strength.
with God's help, with God's help, we'll figure this out together. Amen.